Uh, rewind just a little bit, okay? When you think about events in isolation, just think of the simplest example you can. Let's go back to thinking about a die, okay? Now, the example I always go back to is just pick a number, any number, pick a number in a die for me. Four. Four. <laughs> I heard fours most, okay? So, I heard six, yeah, it is the number. Um, if I said something like this, okay, P4, um, how do you read that in the context of chance and probability? It's a probability of rolling a four, okay? So far, so good. Now, if I said in theoretical terms, like in theory, what would the probability be? Your answer would be six. Okay, now just remind me. One out of six, where does the one come from? Like, what does it mean? Because it's, it's the favorable outcomes, and there's only a single four on the faces of the die. Yes? And then the six corresponds to it? Yep, very good. The total events, the size of the sample space, there are six faces, you get it. Okay. Now, underneath this way you've written this, what I want to put alongside this, remember I said, um, I don't want to just think about events in isolation. I want to think about them in relation to other events. So for instance, if I posed a parallel question, if I said, what's the probability of not rolling a four? Now don't just yell out the answer right away. I just want you to think about it for a second. How would I go about answering this? There's at least two ways, okay? There's a long way, a very inefficient way, and there's a better way. And the long way is, um, what are the ways of not rolling four? What are the actual ways? Thank you. One, two, three, um, five, and six. Okay. So the probability of rolling not a four is all of those probabilities. Do I multiply them or do I add them? I add them, right? Because really, this is the probability of one or two or three. Can you write this with me? Or five or six. And when it's or. Or, 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 you're adding this. These are separate. They can't happen all at the same time. You can't have a one and a two, right? So, unless you're rolling twice. So because they're ors, that means I can add. That's the probability of a one plus the probability of a two, and you get the idea. Okay, now, now that I've set it out, and hopefully you already worked out what the answer is, you can see where the answer comes from, right? Each of these is just like the probability of rolling a four, if the die is fair. Each one is a sixth, there's five of them, so that's why the answer of course is five sixths. Okay, so this is fine. And for a die which only has six alternatives, I, you actually can write this out, even though it's inefficient. But like I said, there's a faster way. Um, we're gonna do two things. Number one, instead of saying not four, we're gonna give a fancy name to this. We call it, as you can see by the heading, the complement of four, which basically means not a four. But we write it in this particular way. You put whatever event you're interested in, and then you put a squiggle over the top, okay? Uh, so the way I read that, instead of saying the probability of rolling a four, this is the probability of the complement of rolling a four, which is exactly the same thing as saying not four. Okay, now do you notice, right? If you roll a four, or you roll a not four, that's all of the options, right? That's the total sample space, right? So what's the probability of rolling something, anything within the sample space, any of those options? Six. It's gonna be six out of six, isn't it, right? So that's why a six, a sixth plus five six is one, because it's guaranteed. You're gonna get one of these, right? So therefore, the way I can write this, if these add up to one, then rather than just adding up all of these, which takes forever, I can just subtract from one. Do you see that? The probability of the complement of an event is the whole probability take away the original one you started with, right? You can actually see the numbers that make sense, right? This, of course, is one take away a sixth, which gives you the five sixths we had before. And this is much more handy when, you know, maybe there's not six outcomes, maybe there are like 600 outcomes, and you don't want to write all of them. Um, even if it wasn't 600, it might be something simple like 52, okay? I don't want to have to write all 51 other options, I just want to write it in a nice, efficient way, okay? So this language here, this idea, if I can generalize it a little bit, I've got space over here on the right. You can go ahead and you can put this underneath, I just don't want to get in the way of my cards. For any event, and we usually name our event E for event, right? The probability of that event 
not happening. That's the complement, right? It's the opposite. The probability of it not happening is 1. Take away the probability of it actually happening. Does that make sense? So this is the way an event and its complement, the way the probabilities match up together. Okay. Now, from that sentence, which is kind of like writing this, but not just for fours, for anything, okay, I can get two different relationships out of that, which I'd love you to put underneath here. You can either say, if you rearrange this equation just a teeny bit, um, for instance, I could add this probability of the event, I could add it to both sides, right? If I add it to both sides, over on the left I'll get this. How likely is the event to happen? How likely is the event not to happen? They'd better add up to 1. Do you see that? Because look, it's disappeared from the right hand side. Or alternatively, in the same way that I wrote this, if I think about the actual event, then the probability of that happening is 1 take away its complement. Okay? All three of these, they all say the same thing. It's just that we'll use different ones based on whatever you want to do. 